Thank you so much, uh, Chris, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, and also maybe good evening, if there is anyone joining uh, from, from Australia. So um, I'm really glad to join, to be part of this uh, conversation. And I would like to start by really thanking uh, the, the, the team that has organized this, the panel, the te technical series, and um, the folks at uh, World Food Program and through University for the opportunity they are giving Water Aid and myself really to, to be part of this, uh, di these discussions on the uh, acute malnutrition and the dry land. And um, I also want to use the opportunity to really uh, congratulate World Food Program leadership and all of the staff for really winning uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, no, uh, uh, Nobel uh, Peace uh, Prize, which is really absolutely deserved. So um, now uh, to really to, to um, start really sharing some of the, uh, some of the uh, point I would like to put forward uh, from, from where I sit, uh, it's really coming with the, um, uh, through the angle of the water sanitation and hygiene. Because as you know, um, uh, Water Aid, we are an international organization working across the globe uh, in, in uh, about 32 countries, both in the global north and global south, which focuses on really the, the access to water sanitation hygiene, uh, connecting with the other, uh, other aspects of development. So uh, next slide, please. Um, I'm not going to, uh, I, as, as Chris and uh, Emmanuel also mentioned, the, the previous panel have already spoken about really the climate variability, you know, how it relates to, you know, and the links with the seasonality, et cetera. And we had also a summary at the introduction. So uh, it's really, as I said, focusing on the water sanitation hygiene in relation to the dry land livelihood systems, the, the resilience of, the, of its men and women, and also uh, the link with the gender and nutrition. Uh, so next, next slide, please. So what's the issue? Uh, the issue with the, I, I think is, you know, we have the drivers of malnutrition are, are unique to each context across our environment, economies, social and health system, that's first. And second, there is no one, no one size fits all blueprint for a nutrition sensitive or integrated uh, wash nutrition program. Uh, and then we have the third point is the dry land conditions such as region experiencing water insecurity due to, to, due to climate and other vulnerabilities or further exacerbate poor wash water sanitation hygiene status as a driver of malnutrition. So analyzing these, the existing inequalities and power imbalances uh, from my view is really uh, fundamental to contextualize any program or policy recommendation for water sanitation hygiene, climate or water security, which then impact on the nutrition, especially in the dry land already facing vulnerabilities. Uh, and I think we, we have a lot to learn from uh, the men and women living in the dry land, because I think if we talk about resilience, these people have been the most resilience I have known in my, in, 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 in my experience. And I'm coming from, from this region and I, I have, I live there, I have worked there for years. So uh, I think it's really, there is a lot to, to learn from, from, from their own experiences. Next slide, please. So, and uh, this is really to, to show the conceptual links between the climate change and, and nutrition. And, uh, and just, you know, I think that for those that have uh, uh, access to the Global Nutrition Report 2015, I, I will encourage you to go there and then you will find this conceptual uh, uh, um, uh, diagram. And, and where the poor, poor water sanitation hygiene comes in is really, you know, it's really, you know, the environment people are living in, the health, 
uh, and, 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 and how the environment can be either enabling or disabling and water, water security being really a key part of the enabling uh, uh, um, environment uh, in which the, the, the men and the women from the dry land lives in because, and I will, uh, later you will see that there are specific examples on how improving the, the water security and improving uh, the, 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 the access to safe water, uh, the adequate uh, uh, sanitation and hygiene, how it's also supporting the health of the people, how it's supporting their education, how it's also contributing to uh, a better equality and inclusion. So it's just to so show, you know, that you can talk about you can talk about uh, the 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 context of the dry land, uh, the the livelihood of the men and the women that live there. Uh, talking about the nutrition, you know, um, or, or the malnutrition, without really talking about their access to to water sanitation and 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 hygiene, and and also how any solutions towards really addressing the, the issue they are facing to improve the, the nutrition via uh, sustainable and good livelihood really need to take into account uh, that, that access to water sanitation hygiene. Next slide, please. So um, now uh, let me talk about the, the, the resilience, you know, building the resilience and the water access to water sanitation hygiene and, and how it it's, can support the, the livelihoods. Uh, the resilience and the green recovery and for, for you know you see in this circle and and where we we are talking about really the basic human needs of of men and women and how the environment the the the, the energy the agriculture industry really as you know all of this about when we talk about water security how all of these these different spheres uh, are, are the water security is connected to them so the definition we at WaterAid give to, to the water security is having really reliable access to water of sufficient quantity and quality for basic human needs, for the small scale livelihood, for the ecosystem services, coupled with effective management of water related risk. So that's what this, this, this circle is trying to to, uh, to um, uh, translate in, in, you know, where you have the really putting at the center the, the, the basic human needs of the men and the women. Next slide, please. So what are the threats to water security? You know, why water, why, why water security uh, is, is, uh, it, it matters and, and, and what are the threats? So we need really to, for, for us to address them. Um, it's, you know, and, and what are the complex interactions? And again, uh, really, if you look at the political economy, I don't want to go into detail into that, but I think it's just, you, you just look at uh, the, the, the different connection you have uh, between the, 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 the social, uh, the gender and social inclusion. You look at the uh, empowerment of people and, and, and communities, you know, com I, I always want to talk about men and women because communities, I think the, 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 the word tend not to really look at the, the people in, in their specific uh, and status, uh, specific status and, and, and conditions. Uh, so, so that means you can't really, uh, Hazard and vulnerability vary from place to place. I, I mentioned that earlier. And in practice, we cannot single out clim, uh, climate change alone. So we, we have to really look at what are the multiple hazards and vulnerabilities that are really affecting the people and that are uh, undermining or uh, uh, making their resilience uh, a challenge and how, because we then how to address them, those in order to, to be building their resilience. Uh, next slide, please. So, Mariam, less than one minute, if you can wrap up. Yes. So, uh, very quickly, I just want to talk about the community-based water resource management in rural West Africa, where it's really supporting community to be able to identify uh, the water users and, and stressed before service is introduced to be able to assess the quantity of the water available for the different users of the community through monitoring the water level and rainfall data. And the picture shows you how we do it. And then the third step being 
taking these data, data that have been collected to inform the design of water facilities for the multiple users of services uh, and uh, services and appropriate management arrangement. Then when do we need to take the water, uh, to use the water for uh, the market gardening of the women when the animals can come for, from the pastoralists and take the water. So to avoid, to really have a collective responsibility on really managing the, the, the water resources towards uh, helping uh, uh, making decisions on how to use it at what moment and for whom, and, and which would make really uh, strong the community in, in the, in, and the leadership of the community, of the community in, 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 its, it, in their ability really to, to, to manage the different demand and, and, and address them. Very quickly, maybe on the other ones, I, I, and I'm going to wrap up. I just want to, next slide, please, if I can go to. Um, so uh, we, we can skip this one because this is, as I said, agreeing the community making, you know, but just to say how this can be really linked to uh, malnutrition, uh, uh, you know, and how to improve that malnutrition. So we have a specific example in, in Talo uh, in Mali, which it, uh, you know, working with a health uh, uh, district through the access to water sanitation hygiene and really getting really the people that, you know, uh, involved from the beginning to the end in, 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 in really identifying the issue sharing the information and, and bringing up uh, or building up the knowledge about the linkages between water sanitation hygiene and nutrition uh, among the different stakeholders. And then being able to get that to, to work on the synergy between the action between wash, nutrition and health. So rather than you know uh, getting different single sectors doing their own thing so and i we, uh, you know we can share that experience i just want to go to my final slide which i think is about what need to change as i don't have in, uh, a lot of time so i think if we look at really uh, um, at uh, um, you know building the resilience of the men and women living in dry lands towards really addressing the 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 acute malnutrition uh, you know i think it's really important to be linking the short term urgent response to nutrition, which we see when there is uh, uh, an emergency. And we know this, 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 the dry land are really prone to, uh, to, to either environment, natural or uh, uh, human-made shocks. Uh, so it's really building that long-term systemic change in water security to resilience, to sustain positive outcomes. So the, the, the short term has to be linked to the longer term development approach. And then it's really the second one is the people of dry land, the men, women, boys and girls, the people with disability need to be put at the center of the plant and the policy. And what does it mean? Often we, we can say that and, and you know, a very nice statement, but here it's to say that it has to start with them by them identifying what are the challenges. So we don't look at them as just the beneficiaries uh, of, of, of you know, the policies and the practices we want to change and the goodwill will we have, but look at them as actors and not actors in, in just one specific, but across the process. The third one is working together to drive the required changes in a, in a given context. So towards building a systematic multi-sectoral and multi-actors approach throughout the process. Uh, I know that there are very good example of that, uh, but we also are conscious that we need to improve, uh, to, to keep really improving how we do it. And the fourth one, which I will, I'm going to end here, is analyzing uh, uh, and contextualizing and addressing gender and power imbalances in policies practices and behaviors and, and on a very systematic way. And again, by getting the people, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, as part of it. And, you know, so let me stop here and, and looking forward to uh, questions and, and comment from you on the, on the subject. Thank you and, and, and bye for now. <laughs>